love this lesson. Lesson 7-12, Fractions of Collections. This is our last new lesson before we do our math review um, for the entire Unit 7, which you guys have done on your own with me just guiding you through these videos. Um, so here we go. We're going to start with some different activities that you can do on a um, scratch piece of paper or a whiteboard with a marker and then we will move on to another practice problem and then we'll dig into our math journals today. Here we go. For our warm-up, if you had to share six pennies between two people, what would that look like? Well, I would go ahead and I would first draw my two people and then I would put my six pennies in there. So one here one here, one here, one here. I'm going up to six. So we would say if you shared six pennies between two people, they would each get three. So here's my next question. If you would share six pennies among three people, how many pennies would each person get? Your correct answer should be one, two, three, four five, six. Each person should get two pennies. If you share six pennies among one person, guess what? They're going to get all six pennies. Great job. All right, here's our next one. Jules has a stamp collection with 12 stamps. She puts half of her stamps on one page and the other half on another page. How many stamps are on each page? You may use counters or drawings to help. I'm going to go ahead and draw what a stamp collection book often looks like when you have it open. It's like a normal kind of book. It looks like this. If we know she has 12 stamps and she puts half on this page and half on this page, the question says how many stamps are on each page. So how many stamps are going to go here? How many stamps are going to go here? All right, if you said that there would be six stamps over here and six stamps over here, you are correct. What if you were to say that Jules still has those 12 stamps, but this time Jules is going to divide them between three pages. So three pages on a stamp book. How many stamps, if they were divided equally, would go on each page. If you were thinking four stamps on each page, you would be correct. What if we did 12 stamps again, but instead of having only three pages, let's say that we want to divide them between four pages. How many stamps would go on each page? Correct answer, three. Great job. All right, we're gonna go ahead and open up in our math journals to page 249. Go ahead and get yourself ready and then we'll start. Let's underline some key information in the first one. Two people share a collection of eight pennies equally. How many pennies does each person get? This is super similar to what we were doing in our math warm-ups. I want you guys to try this on your own. Two people sharing eight pennies equally. They each would get four pennies. And then it says, what fraction of the pennies in the collection does each person get? Well, if here's this person and here's this person, and they each end up with four pennies, they would get four pennies out of eight. Can you think of another fraction that would be equivalent to that? If you were thinking one half, you are correct. All right. Five people share a collection of 15 pennies equally. How many pennies does each person get? So I have five people and I have to share 15 pennies between them. Go ahead and push stop while you do this problem and then check with me. All right, I filled mine in 
and I said that each person gets three pennies. The next question asks us what fraction of the pennies does each person get? Well, if each person gets three pennies, they're getting three out of 15 pennies. Another fraction that you could use is you could say that they are each getting one fifth of the pennies if you were thinking equivalent fractions. All right, for number three, there are 12 eggs in the carton. After the carton is dropped, seven of the eggs are cracked. What fraction of the eggs in the carton did not crack? So we know that there were 12 eggs in the carton, so our whole is gonna be 12. And we know that seven cracked. So how many didn't crack? Five twelfths did not crack. And the last one. Julie and Amanda each have eight pencils. Three eighths of Julie's pencils are blue. Five eighths of Amanda's pencils are blue. Who has more pencils? Draw a picture to show your thinking. So we know that there's Julie and there's Amanda. And I'm going to draw a line right here. And we know that they each have eight pencils. So I'm going to draw eight pencils for them. And eight pencils for Amanda. And we know that three-eighths of Julie's pencils are blue. So I'm going to circle the blue ones. And we know that five-eighths of Amanda's pencils are blue. So I'm going to circle those blue ones. Who has more blue pencils? So when you look at this, who has more blue pencils? Our correct answer would be Amanda. Awesome. Go ahead and go on to the next page with me. This is a pretty short lesson today, so we're going to do all of the math box problems today. Um, number one, I'm not worried about. You guys are going to do great. Number two, don't forget to use break apart on these trickier ones. Um, and then number three, we've had problems like this before. It says that a five minute shower uses 95, but be careful, a 10 minute uses 190. How many liters of water can you save by taking a five minute shower instead of a 10 minute shower? So I would figure out how much water you're using if you do it, um, the 10 minute shower and taking the five minute shower and you might need to do some subtraction there perhaps. All right, number four, complete the fraction number story. Margaret ate how many eighths of the pizza? Justin ate how many eighths of the pizza? Connor ate how many eighths of the pizza? And then it says how many eighths of the pizza was left over? Well, here's the deal. You need to make sure that when you put all these fractions together, it is not greater than 8 eighths. All of these together need to be equal to um, 8 eighths. And then number five, explain how you could use either the doubling or the break apart strategy to solve 15 times 6 in problem 2. So remember the difference between doubling and break apart. Doubling is when you break apart a factor into the same number. For example, if you have 8 and you broke it apart into 4 and 4, that would be doubling. But if you did break apart with 8, that would be breaking it into 3 times something and 5 times something. All right, let's look at our home link for today. You can go ahead and push pause on this to grab your home link and look over it, or you can... Um, Keep going with these problems and then check this out later. Here we go. All right, solve. Explain to someone at home how you figured out the numerator and denominator for each fraction in problems one through three. Uh, remember, we do not call them the top number and the bottom number. The numerator is the number that's on top, the part, and then the denominator is the number that's on bottom, the whole. It says 12 dogs are in the park, two of them are chasing a ball, 
What fraction of the dogs are chasing a ball? Seven children are waiting for the school bus. Four of them are girls. What fraction of the children are girls? Number three, there are 16 tulips in the garden. Four of them are red. What fraction of the tulips are not red? And then Lisa and Carly each have six cups. Two sixths of Lisa's cups are yellow. Four sixths of Carly's cups are yellow. Who has more yellow cups? Draw a picture to show your thinking. Please make sure that when you are labeling them as yellow, just use a Y. You don't need to get out um, colored pencils or anything like that. And then it says fill in the unit. Show your work on the back of this page. You may do that or you may show your work down here. Um, good luck on this one today. It's the last home link before we do our review packet. Please make sure that you meet me tomorrow um, for the Zoom call and we will do the review packet together. So if you're able to do the Zoom call, we'll do the entire math review packet together. If you're not able to do the Zoom call, then you can go ahead and do the review packet on your own and I will post the um, answer key to that um, as well so you can check your work, even if you aren't able to join us. All right, good luck today. Bye.